Designing your sales screen. Design tips and tricks. All right, so we're going to go to the sales designer. And to make your sales screen look uh, as professional as possible, um, always try to use the, um, the guidelines here. Okay, so a couple of things to be aware of. You are you do have multiple styles in the photo button, but try to keep to one style if you can. Don't mix them, or it can give um, very unprofessional looking results. Okay, another thing to do as well is if you go into say menu one, so say this was a manufacturer or something, you can bulk select them, make them a bit smaller like that. And if you use the arrow keys to push them up a bit like this. And if we drag that down, you can also draw what's called a transparent button. So if you click that, and there we go. So buttons can have background colors and things like this, but they can also have uh, be completely um, transparent. And the great thing is, is if we click display text and say menu one, like that, I'm going to right click and turn off auto size font, like that. The button can also do absolutely nothing. So we've had buttons that did, um, that have more buttons and objects behind them. We've had buttons that do functions. We've had buttons that link to products. We can also have buttons that do absolutely nothing. So the great thing is here, if I just go back to the sales mode, when we click on menu one, people will be able to see which ones they clicked on at the top. Now, at the moment, it gives it still makes a little uh, movement pattern when we're clicking on down. But if we right click that and say object disabled, okay, now when we go back into it, you can click it and nothing will happen. So any static text you want to put on the screen, any warnings, any reminders for staff members, use the transparent button and draw it over. Another good trick for using transparent buttons is if we uh, say double click more options there, you could actually make that a transparent button. And this could be a description about whatever item is. So if, say this was an um, item one to be clicked on. This, this button contains some information about the product like that make this font a bit smaller like this and you could actually put some information on it could even move these underneath and do that So anything that needs ingredients or descriptions, you could use that. It could be quite useful. Okay, another good thing you can do is if you right click, you can see you can set a background or a foreground image. So a background image will stretch to the entire dimensions of the button. But a foreground image is like an extra image on top of it. So let me show you what we mean. Let's say we're in a, we're in a pet store and I'm just going to draw a quick box here. And this bot box is going to be the dog section. Okay. So I'm going to write the word dog on that. If we open up a browser like this, go to a website called iconarchive.com. And if I just put in puppy like that, we get a bunch of pictures. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on, say, this one here. And I'm going to download a PNG. And since I know, if I just go back to the button here, if I click on properties, I can see the height and width. So the height and width is 100 and 200. So its height is 100. So when we're doing this, we definitely don't want to go any bigger than 100. So I think 72 by 72 is a good size. So I'm going to click that. And I'm going to save this image as, and I'm going to put it on my desktop and just say puppy two. That's fine. Now, if I right click and say set foreground image, okay, and set image from file, I now go to my desktop, click on that, and there's a picture of a dog. If we right click, set foreground image, set width, and just make it zero in this case, so it'll be any so it won't be any, it'll be the height and width of the actual object itself. 
You may also want to put the text on the right hand side as well. So just right click it, say set text alignment, center right, and now that goes on the right as well. Another trick you might want to do it the opposite way around. So if we just go back to the browser and find another picture of a dog, another way of doing it would be like this. So let's get two pictures, eh? There we go. And what I'm going to do, well, that's a bit uh, bright down. Let's go this one. You could also have the box a bit more like this. So if you right click that, set foreground image, like that, make sure you choose the width of zero so it uses the native image. Okay, and I'm going to right click, set foreground image, set foreground alignment, top middle. And then the, bot, the text could be dog. And then right click, set text alignment, bottom middle. So you could have maybe boxes like that as well. However you want to lay them out, it's up to you. I said these guidelines make them quite easy to line them up. If you go to template options, you can also turn on grid lines. Maybe make the grid size 10 so it's a bit easier to line up. Some people like like a grid behind them so it's maybe easier for them to see it, etc. Okay, another good trick to do um, is if you have multiple sizes of something, okay, so let's let's do menu two, and I'm just going to draw some boxes again. So let's just draw nine, like that. If I've got some, let's say it was a, um, a bar, and you have a half a pint and a pint. Rather than taking up two boxes, you can you could do it like this. You could say, I'm not going to draw a product, but I'm just going to say, let's say this is the pint of Moretti, like that. Rather than writing half pint of Moretti, a good little trick is to just put half, like that. And then what you do is, if you put the text alignment, center right, give it a slightly different color, like this. What you can actually do is put it halfway across, right click, send to back. You are allowed to layer buttons on top of each other. Okay? And this way you've only used one and a half times the amount of buttons of, of, of width rather than twofold. So now if we use the sales mode and click menu two, that could be a half pint, that could be a pint. But you would put the product called, you know, pint of Moretti, and this would have a product name of half pint of Moretti. So they could be quite useful, especially it's got a bit too much height on them, so I'd probably go a bit more like that. You don't need that much space either. So it's a great way of being able to do multiple sizes, and you are allowed to layer the buttons on top of each other, so that can be a quite a good useful trick to um, not use as much space and get a lot more products on the same screen. You do have a lot of options when you right click, so you can put shadows, borders, um, auto size font. When that's turned on, the text will be squashed so that it will always fit the button, no matter how much text is on there. You can put a text shadow, which I do recommend. They do give it a good effect. At the moment, that's turned on, so there's a black text shadow underneath that. Um, but again, yeah, you can do a lot of good effects, and also you can actually manually specify the X and Y coordinates if they're not lining up properly. But always have the snap to grid turned on. If you ever use full edit mode, like this, the snap to grid automatically turns itself off. So just keep that in mind. You may want to turn it back on again uh, if you're, oops, I double click that, if you're lining them up. Another good little trick to do as well is you can have, if you press edit selected template, it says canvas design gradient. You can click on that. If we choose color blend like this, you can choose which angle it goes, one solid color, or actually just change it. So if I chose it to be maybe bright like that. Oh no, I don't like that. Let's, let's, you can even click this and choose a purple and match the aesthetics of your store as well, whatever your logo or um, store colors are. So if I press tick, press tick like that, see what that looks like. There we go. So you can change the background color there. You can also change 
There's a button here on current page. There's a canvas override, meaning change the background color but only on this page. So if you turn that on and say set, um, set canvas color, choose blue, maybe the same blue, click on that. And now what will happen is when you're on that page, the background color will change. Sometimes used when is a warning or it's a dangerous section to be on. So um, there's some tricks you can do in terms of trying to improve the aesthetics uh, of the screen and things like that. Um, always try and use as well uh, the align objects as well to make sure that they're all aligned against each other. So you can select multiples like that and say align top and it will make sure that they're always aligned at the top part there. Okay, but most of the time you can do it manually.